I start, I just want to mention, for those of you that are, came on late, you may want a Kleenex or two. Uh, we're getting some, our topic today is about, is, uh, is sadness. It's talking about sadness and how do we move through that. Um, so, the events of the week of loss of 19 children and, 19 children and, no, actually I think it's 20 children now and two adults. Um, and it's just unfolding. And we're not here to make out anybody to be wrong, but I don't know about you, but um, I've, I've had to bury a baby in my early 20s and it was really hard. And they're still talking about how, in fact, they have the memorial going on right now uh, in Texas. So I want to I wanna talk about our feelings. How many people have been pretty sad this week? Yeah. How many of you um, are holding your feelings? Anybody holding them? How many of you are confused? I am. How could this happen again? How could this happen again? And how many of you feel like you have no power? We should all be raising our hand on that one. But we do. And I'll talk about that at the end. What is the power that we do have? The thing about all of this and... Um, is that during anything like this, there is this thing called uh, a sad heart. If you've ever broken up, broken up with somebody that you loved a lot and it didn't work out, your heart hurts. If your heart hurts, just put it here. Feel it. It's okay. This is a normal thing. Don't deny that feeling in your heart. In fact, the, the husband of the, the wife had a heart attack and died. And he died of uh, a lonely, lonely heart syndrome. There's another name for it. But the point being is, is that's a real feeling. And I can remember in my own life when I broke up with somebody and it was so devastating to me. One, I couldn't get out of bed. And two, my heart hurt. It hurt. And so I used to have it. I still have a little teddy bear that I used to hold to my heart so that I could feel better. So don't deny that feeling. Do not deny that. It's, what has happened is horrific. Ernest Holmes would not want you to deny this has happened. The thing about being sad or having these feelings of despair is that um, it can snowball. It can get bigger than we need it to get. But we must release it. We must know there is an end. We must know that there is, we, and I'll talk about this at the end, we have a purpose here. One is to feel it, and two is, who are we? How, what do we do about this? How do we move forward through this? Um, this isn't a quote, but it, it's a very profound statement. It says, the best cure for sadness is to allow the wave to wash over us and to pass. Give it time. If you are, feel like crying, I've, I've had people who I've, I don't want to say I counseled this week, but I've kind of been with this week, who are just so sad. They're so sad, and I said, just let it come. Let it out. Don't be afraid of it. It is who you are. It is who you are on the inside. And in fact, they say in some cases, there's a, you know, when you go to a memorial, you'll find two or three people who really are very sad. And really what's going on is, is they, those people hold the sadness for the whole group. So whenever you see that, allow that to take place. Don't try and stop it because they're releasing what everybody else is feeling. The thing is we have to surrender. We have to surrender there, and that's not a normal thing. How many people want to hold their sadness? I know we, we had one that said maybe. Sometimes we do that. We hold that to pr what we think we're doing is protecting ourselves, and we don't need to protect ourselves, especially when we're amongst people we love and who love us. There's nothing. We don't have to do that anymore. But it is important that we're gentle. You know, when, when I talk with individuals who 
have are in whether it's a breakup or a death or uh, you know something tragic um the first thing i say is please take care of yourself so a good example is today mary should be giving this talk mary was in the hospital last night we have not talked to her yet this morning i didn't know where she was and and uh victoria victoria had a something happened to her this week and she's online thank god she's online but it was you know these are things that we're like oh how do we deal with this well first of all the most important thing is that we take care of yourself take care of yourself and if your heart hurts then take care of your heart feel it and and just breathe into it um uh, Reverend Scott Aubrey said this is I am in touch with any sadness that may be residing in my heart I have the courage to let myself feel it have the courage to do that and sadness leads to other feelings um, like guilt and blame and shame and we don't I never put that together but that's very true I mean in this tragic situation they're trying to blame somebody there's no need to blame. We need to discover what has happened. How could that have been prevented? And not just from the policeman, but this young man who had this happen to him. He's no longer alive. He's no longer here to learn from his own mistakes. So we don't just play, pray for the families. We pray for this young man knowing that there's something greater that that was going on with him that maybe we need to know more about and 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 it's sad that it got to that situation the thing the thing that i think is most important is feeling guilt blame and shame are normal now when we let it take over it's not so it's not about taking over our lives or or the situation which i'm I'm hoping and praying that there's some gentleness around all of this. I put this together in about 20 minutes, so. And I'm going to have Celia come up here in a minute. Um, I'm just going to read this, and then I'll have Celia come up. It says, sometimes we just need to let... The sting of the situation subside a bit and our bruises, because our heart is bruised, our emotions are bruised, heal in order to find the lessons and then keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward, not be caught up in the blame and shame. It's a very sad situation. We and I think the whole I think the whole I don't think the world is, but I think everybody in the United States is feeling this. And um, again, I'll talk about where we go from this afterwards. So I'm going to have Sylvia come up and, and talk a little bit, and then we'll move on. Thank you, Reverend Suzette. Everyone, just take a deep breath. <sighs> Exhale. Let your top of your head reach out to the sky. And just give a little shoulder shrug. And send love out from your heart to each other and to the world. Mindful mending, moment by moment, memory by memory. Yes. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. And we are here in the field now with our hearts and minds gathered in gentle unity. I envision this field to be a magnificent meadow, a beautiful, gorgeous, 
fluorescent, illuminated flowers and blossoms and trees and plants and every living creature that loves to be in meadows with us. I know this is where mindful mending, mindful mending can flourish moment by moment, memory by memory. Every plant, flower, rose petal, root, little bug receives the memories to cherish forever in his meadow. Yes. So more than ever in times like this, we can choose to reclaim and nurture our peace of mind, serenity, and balance. I discovered a lovely writer uh, website uh, entrepreneur, a, um, a woman who likes to think of herself as a teacher of ease, like grace and ease, alwayswellwithin.com, in case you'd like to look her up. And I liked what she said. There, I'll give you a couple of things here, quotes. Her name is Sandra Paluva. And so I'm going to ask you to do something, a very short little thing with me. I invite you to close your eyes and repeat in your mind what I say. You don't have to say it out loud, but just take it into your heart, into your mind, and let it sink deeply. I gather my mind and heart when I wake in the morning. I gather my mind and heart when the world begins to overwhelm me. I gather my mind and heart when I feel happy and joyful, knowing this too shall pass. I gather my mind and heart when I get into bed at night. And I gather my mind and heart in random moments throughout the day and the night. You may know and open your eyes if you like. And just know that by doing this with me like this, it has deepened in me and in you, and in you online. So whatever I do, wherever I go, I'm asking myself, how are my mind and heart? You can do the same. Check in with yourself. And it's OK. Wherever you are, grocery store, riding the bus, taking the walk, lying back, and just listening to some music or just being pensive for a moment and just say, how are my heart and mind? The heart leads. The heart opens and lets the brain know the instructions what to do. The heart leads. And so therefore, gently, gently, you shall find peace and spaciousness and a warm heart has become your second nature. Now, let me just step back a minute. I will tell you that there was a time in my life when we were studying, well, I heard about this technique called primal scream. You heard of that? <laughs> then you are as old as I am. 
at least 100 years. But do you recall that what it was about was letting go and from the pits of your bowels up through your esophagus and out, you, <laughs> ah! I did more than that. I'm not going to wreck the microphone. But it's a powerful thing to do. The primal scream works. Just step outside in your backyard, take a walk in the woods, and listen to the primal screams that are out there. And join them. Let it go, let it flow. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Suzette to come back up and wrap it up for us. She didn't tell the story that went along with that. <laughs> I guess I won't, huh? Maybe later, huh? So, during this time, it's important that we're, we're tender with ourselves. You know, and tender to me that looks like you put, put your hands on your heart and you feel yourself. You remember the moments. Because if you're having feelings about this, that means something prior to today, prior to this event, is affecting you. And so it's important that we notice that. Not be afraid of it. Just move into it. There's some things we can do to be proactive with this. And uh, I think that we have the kind of community that does do this. So maybe talking to each other, like this week. Wednesday night, we had four people, four or five people. And so we talked about it. How did we feel? We got it out. We didn't hold it in. I had individuals calling me, texting me, doing whatever it took to kind of get that through. Um, sometimes maybe it's just taking a walk on, on the beach. I can remember I used to do that a lot. I would walk on the beach and I would, I would listen to the water because there's a higher vibration there. Or in nature, there's a higher vibration. Maybe it's fit sitting with friends like Mava and, and Mary did this week. If you've got the newsletter, you know? Just being together, not being alone. Sometimes it's listening to music, you know? Creating music. It's listening letting your heart connect with something that's greater than you so that you're not carrying it. Maybe it's taking a hot bath. I wish I could do that. All I have is a shower now, but <laughs> I can remember those days. Um, and, and this is, next statement is where I want to take us. Maybe we see, we feel, we understand as well as we can what has transpired and also remember we are the light keepers. Amen. We are the light keepers. There's always going to be some kind of tragedy. There is always going to be something going on. I don't know about you, but it seems like it is 24-7 now. 24-7. But uh, what do you think a light keeper does? Tell me, what do you think a light keeper does? Tell me. Anybody. Shines the light, light into the darkness. Anybody online? Feel free to speak out. So they, they, I need to hear them if they, somebody comes online. Anybody else? Have fun. I'm sorry? Have some fun. Have some fun. <laughs> Okay. Anybody online want to speak? You're all shy today. <laughs> all right. Well, here's your lesson today. You are the light keepers. What does that mean? You are, we are, the individuals who know a higher truth. And we study that. Every class you take here is about bringing some kind of revelation to yourself. It's about holding a higher look look at it from up here opposed to down here. It's about feeling our feelings and yet knowing that we're holding the high watch. For not just for ourselves, for our for society, for San Diego, 
for our state, for the world. And so what could be the high watch or the high thought we could have for this situation? For me, what came to me was sometimes there has to be tragedy, unfortunately, sadness like this, so that we can say change has to take place. And change takes place not by taking away, but by putting in things that make sense. You know, I mean, I could solve the whole problem, right? Take them all away. That's not the name of the game. The name of the game is our other changes that could make a difference. And so we don't have to outline what those changes are, but we can say change can take place. And I don't know if you know this, but I've been kind of watching this day by day by day. Right now there's the blame game, but we're going to know that's passing too. But change is taking place. America is no longer happy with our children being killed. Not just our children, but churches. We're a target just as much as a child. So it's important that we realize that we have to hold the high watch for that truth of change to take place in a way that everybody wins. Everybody wins. And, and, and I don't bring politics up into this stage, so I'm not going to outline what that looks like. But I want you to think about what does that look like. What does that feel like to you? I know many of you have children out there, little ones to tall ones. They're all important. But we have the capability to pray and know that there's good change taking place. And if we don't see it, and you feel like you're an ad, you know, um, advocate for something, then go be for something. Not against, but be for something, whether it's change or changing a law or you know, helping children that are mentally ill, whatever that is, do it. Be activated by your heart. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm here to guide you not to do that, though. I don't go out in the world like that. I, I'm more about educating and making sure that we're all paying attention. Um, in fact, I, it's funny. I just got this letter this morning. And I want to read it to you. But this is from Edward Voyon. He's our spiritual leader for Centers for Spiritual Living. And he says this, to the beloved community of Ohm Center for Spiritual Living. He even addressed it to us. Yay, and that's kind of cool. Thank you for being a part of Centers for Spiritual Living and for all the good work you do in the world. When I pause to consider the web of connection formed by our member communities, I feel the warmth of being a part of something greater that we are creating together. Through our service and dedication, we are realizing our purpose to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. Whether you're contributing to a world that works for all is through a spiritual education, social engagement, or something else. Thank you for your part and you play. So even our, our spiritual leaders know this is what we're doing in the world. And there's over 400 uh, uh, communities in the, in the whole world. So we're all looking to the light. We're all being the light makers. And that's who we are today. In fact, um, I'm applying to um, to be a part of uh, another organization that's part of, it's called Hefferlin Grant. And uh, I had to write out a resume of all the accomplishments. And I'm like, that sounds kind of arrogant, doesn't it? But I started to write them out. And what I realized is our community, even though majority of them today are online, our community has done a lot. We've done a lot to support different activities. I, I don't, I don't, some of you don't know this, but like we, at Christmas time, I think this was, um, I want to say four years ago, maybe five years ago, we, we um, went to a foster um, facility for kids who have been kicked out of foster homes. And we fed 60 kids, provided sweatshirts for every single one of them, and we bought them dinner. That's making a difference in the world. Maybe we touched one person. Uh, every Christmas, we, we sponsor uh, Urban Street Angels. 
you know, and, and over that time period, we have, I'm trying to think how many, probably probably 100, over 100 kids, maybe more than that, probably more than that, have gotten Christmas presents from us. You know, these may seem very small, but they're not. They're big. Because who thinks about those children that have been in the street? Nobody. Except get them out of the street. Our job here is to do uplift that. Uplift the thought and become that light maker. Light keeper, I should say. So let me end with this. And then I'll praise to the next to bring TJ back. Sadness is a common and natural emotion that we can experience. It's important that we just are aware of it, activated in a way that helps to us to release whatever needs to be released, or if we need healing, then contact a practitioner or a minister and work through that, and then do something about it. So today, my prayer is going to be about change, be about change for us so that we are active in the world. Our mind is active in the world to make those changes. All right? So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Taking in all the sounds that are around us, whether it's an airplane or a bus or somebody working on the paving outside. It's about us connecting to a higher source, connecting to that, that oneness whether that's the mountains, whether that's the, the watching TV and seeing something that we enjoy, whether that's listening to music, but knowing that when we are in feeling the oneness of spirit, it's moving through us. It's connecting us to the, the moment, that exact moment of life. And so I know as we are moving in this light of light workers in the world that we are connected not just to our own community, but to everyone that we touch. And as we are connected to the oneness of God, spirit, whatever name you call it or personalize it, is that that, that radiates through you. It moves you. It works you. It says yes to the good that's possible. And so I know and accept today for, for all of us that we are the light makers, the light keepers. We are shining the light where it is dark. We are, we are looking and are aware and are conscious of more than ourselves. Just being there for and knowing that we have the ability to be conscious of who we are and how we can be in the world. And so my prayer today is about change that there's constant change around this, this event that has taken place this week, that is not about blame or shame, but about bringing goodness to this, a remembrance of these wonderful children, these teachers, the family, and how the world, how the United States can come together as one to bring about a greater resolution so that we all know we are safe and that we are loved and that our government knows and makes us, makes, is a part of that feeling that we have. And so I claim today that the one infinite powerful presence is moving through our leaders, moving through our communities, moving through each church that is talking about this today, moving through I us individually today, and that we're breathing in this possibility of good change. That the change of spirit is moving through all, any and all events that might look like this. So with that, I simply give thanks for the presence of spirit that moves in me to move in you, to move into the greater good, knowing that we are moving that, moving that needle just a little bit more into the good, more into the possibilities, more into the oneness of, of creating a world that works for everyone. And so with that, I give great thanks. I release these words into the 
the law of activity, of mindfulness, of love, knowing that we are creating a world that does work for everyone. And so it is. Amen.